Hi guys, welcome back to another Matchbox Garage video. I am Rob and today I am going to attempt to take this Corgi Rover 3500 from Shabby to Shiny. Uh, this one I think was in an unboxing from Brian Artillery. Uh, Brian, you are always there in the comments and they're always very good comments because uh, I learn a lot from you. But I think this is one that you sent in. Um, obviously, uh, well, I say fortunately for me I get hundreds if not thousands of cars um, given to me or donated to to this channel uh, and I can't remember every single one but I'm sure you gave this one in because it had what was always a missing uh, kind of like towel hatch uh, but uh, I'm sure you will remember uh, but anyway this one I'm going to kind of uh, I guess take it away from the race car and build it into something that what I remember as a kid growing up but uh, yeah, so it is still a current race car, and we've got this lovely little kind of race car team, and it's going to uh, take the racing wheels off for the last time. But uh, yeah, moving that to one side. Uh, do remember, though, if you like this video and it reaches 2,000 likes, this one could be yours. But yeah, so there's the uh, opening hatch, which I'm sure... I've mentioned before uh, is always missing so uh, that's why Brian actually sent it in but yeah it's a Corgi Rover or 3500 or 3500 or 3500 whatever you want to call it but a lovely bit of English or British engineering come with a 3.5 litre V8 I believe a Rover V8 that was used in many a car and uh, it's still being used to hot rod cars today but uh, yeah, this one's actually got uh, four rivets on it. And to be honest, this car kicked my butt from the first moment. And I should have known, just by trying to take this thing apart, that this was going to cause me a heartache and a headache. And uh, But we did get there in the end. As you can see, I've not actually drilled down the centre of the post. I've not tapped all four holes. Main reason is I haven't taken one of these apart before. So I didn't know, you know how far I had. The last thing I wanted to do is obviously drill through and drill through into the car. But yeah, a little bit of mud on the inside of this one. And only now do I unfortunately see a little crack in the windscreen. It's not too much of a problem. It's it's noticeable, of course, but it's it's not too bad. We'll just uh, do our best with this one, cleaning this one up today. But here's the interior. Relatively basic, but good, sturdy, strong. That should last another 45, 50 years as a toy. But yeah, as you can see, this uh, hatch, I'm not going to remove. I know that if I actually remove that for the uh, repainting, that I'm just going to, it's just never going to go back on. But yeah, I was just going to mention the, you can see on the back here, had I drilled through and tapped these, I would have just gone straight into the car, straight through the interior, and, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't have been happy. So I'm glad that I uh, will just glue this one back together today. It's got just enough bite to actually, you know, snap back together, but, you know, a little drop of uh, super glue perhaps to uh, just to make sure it doesn't come off again. But the, uh, the base here, I won't be using these original wheels. So I've got out my uh, Dremel And I'm just going to go through the axle, if not all the way through. Um, I spotted in uh, one of Danny's recent videos where, you know, you would drill halfway through, so you don't actually have to clip the actual car itself, and it'll easily snap and come out like that. So that was a good little tip from Danny, and I shall do that as well going forward. So 
So there you go, quite nice and easy, and we don't damage the base. Now I was looking to go straight into the uh, the footlong, but I just noticed a little bit of uh, damage on this A pillar on the right hand side, the driver's side of the car. And I've just uh, purchased myself one of these little, I think it was, um, it's called a, uh, what was it, it was a, a jeweler's sandbag, I think was what it was called, and it was actually, I never even knew these existed, and it was one of my previous videos where I was doing some um, kind of bending or, or just doing something with with the hammer, and one of the comments uh, was, you know, get yourself one of these, and done a bit of research, so unfortunately I don't remember who it was now, um, it was um, a few weeks ago, but uh, yeah, really, really does the trick. Can't believe I've waited, uh, you know, over a year to actually pick up one of these. Normally, I've got it in my hand or against, you know, a solid surface like the table. But this just has that little bit of give. Um, you can also kind of almost mould it so you can get your car in a nice little position. But uh, yeah, that's a it doesn't cost that much money either. It was less, I think it was about eight pounds including delivery, so about ten bucks. Um, if you do this kind of thing, I'd recommend it. Yeah, so we do, for the first time, go into the foot-long hot dog jar. And there is a tablespoon of caustic soda. I mentioned earlier on that this one kicked my butt. Well... Like I say, this was the first time, and it wasn't the last time, that it had to go into the caustic solution. But yeah, you can see there's a lot of reaction there. This original paint already starting to come off, both the uh, main casting and the base. And whilst that is doing its thing to one side, I shall clean up the, uh, the plastic parts. And this base, oh, it looks brand new to be honest. Um, there's no mud left anymore, but the colour is going to need to change for you know what I have in my mind, my envision. And yeah, you got this little crack, a bit more visible now. But hey, we've got to press on. We we'll try and ignore it using the uh, plastic polish here. and my Dremel just to uh, first of all polish it out So there's the first pass, and I'll go over this a couple of times off camera. And now that it is all buffed out, it looks really good. Um, but we can make it extra good by a little dip in the Pledge Revive It floor polish solution there. I think my hope was that the you know the solution would kind of you know find its way into that little uh, crack and perhaps. Uh, make it a little bit less visible um, for the interior I'm going to use this camo color uh, this was uh, kindly donated by Tony Bellini uh, months ago now uh, this was and it still is for my uh, kind of tank project that will one day come up um, but I just thought this would actually be the perfect color for the interior now these cars from the 70s and 80s in Britain um, the colours were were terrible in a in a good way. They, for me, I love these kind of colours like a, a hearing aid beige, um, this tan colour, browns and golds and greens and you know some of the colours that were that were out around that time were hideous, but in a beautiful way. But anyway, moving on. So this is the casting out of the caustic solution for the first time 
and we have probably around a 93% paint removal if I combine both the main casting and uh, base together. But using the Dremel here, I shall give you a little sample of the bonnet section. And all I need to do is just make it look that good all over. For the base, another one from Mr. Bellini. The uh, black here. So we'll cover this base. The first coat didn't... It wasn't perfect, so I did hit it up with a second coat uh, off camera. But otherwise... This paint for bases is just perfect, in my opinion. There we go. So I put that to one side to dry. Like I say, I did come back with a second coat. Um, and we're going to use the Vallejo um, in the primer, the black primer. Being conscious, of course, about the the hatch there. Even though I didn't take it off painting, there is no um, kind of unpainted part. There is nothing that sticks throughout the undercoat, the colour, and the clear coat. All of them got in the gaps, and it is still very much in operation. Yeah, the uh, first round of undercoat there. And this is the colour I made. Um, I thought this would be very 70s vibe, uh, suit the kind of style and era of this car. And as I look at it, you know, with the black base, the wheels that I've chosen, this colour as the main and the tan interior, just absolute perfect, in my opinion, of course. But uh, this was just a combination of a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow, and a little bit of black. And I couldn't tell you the ratios because I just splodged them in, stirred it up and said, that's the colour I'm painting it. And I actually did that three times. So... Yeah, this one could have come out before today. I'm just doing the voiceover right now. It's almost five o'clock and I'm hoping that this video will upload at six o'clock. And this didn't help. This car was done. This car was beautiful. I've even painted in the details there, front and back. And then just as I was setting up my laptop to, to do the editing, I left the car on the side near the heat lamp just to finally dry it off, right? Yeah, it dried it off a bit too much, so much so, it boiled the paint, and I'm having to go through this, uh, all, this whole thing all over again. Didn't it break your heart? You know, it was done. It just, it just breaks your heart. Even more so, right? I've just run through all that, the, the, you know, just do it quick, you know, the buffing it out again, Painting it again. This is still not the last time that I have to go through this whole process. And I blame myself again. You know, this was my, you know, my fault. But having redone it all again, this is the second time round. But if you look very closely, because I have now rushed it, because it's been a second time, you see these little pimples have started to come up there in the paint. It's, it's basically, from what I can see or understand, is that I just didn't allow enough time to dry fully between the base coat, you know, um, the primer, the base, and the clear. So, 
we finally, for a third time, we got that painted base. And these are the wheels that I've chosen. They're a, a green light, and I think suit this car. A little bit on a larger scale, but still rolls. The interior there. Third time lucky. This is the paint again. Um, all the detail was painted in there as well. Apologies for the uh, state of my hands. I've actually been painting my fence and uh, shed in between. But uh, anyway, I'm sure you'll let me off. So I'll put it all back together. But as a little reminder of what she did look like. And this is finally the result. Third time lucky. Um, like I mentioned, these wheels, a little bit on the larger scale. But it does still roll. I'll show you at the very end of the video if you want to watch that. But um, yeah, it looks like the front has just popped up a, a millimetre or so there. But yeah, it does, uh, it does sit nice and flush. Kind of credit card fitment, I think the kids call it nowadays. But yeah, beautiful colour. I think suits this car. The wheels suit it if they were maybe a couple of millimetres smaller. But nice little bit of detail in those rear lights. The uh, window section, like I say, I think it's, it's almost new. Apart from that tiny little crack, which I think is barely noticeable really. But yeah, um, and I, like I say, uh, thanks to Brian. I know he sent me one of these. I'm sure it's this one, so thank you, mate. And remember, for everybody else, with 2,000 likes, it could be yours. But anyway, massive thanks to my patrons again. Cheers, guys. And I hope you like this one. And uh, please stick around for the next.